The town of Tangi has stood empty for years, its people driven out by the Taliban during the fight for control of Kajaki Dam, just 500 metres upstream. In the streets, it's evident they left in a hurry. But thanks to the presence of British and now American boots on the ground and a strong Afghan National Police presence, the people of Tangi are beginning to trickle back. There's a bakery in town again. For the moment, they only have two families as customers, but they are selling to the Afghan National Police and the ISAF troops. We've told ourselves we'll give it a year. It's fine for the moment, no one bothers us. Haji Faizullah is the police chief in Tangi. His force of 48 officers is making heroic efforts to secure the town against an ever-present Taliban threat, not just protecting Tangi, but also outlying villages. We patrol every night until morning while ISAF watch from the hills. This is to keep the enemy away. It's very green around here with lots of trees, and if we don't patrol, they can creep closer. Faizullah says he needs 200 officers really, but recruiting is not easy in a ghost town. One man who's come back to join the fight to protect Tangi had a tailoring shop in the bazaar until five years ago. I signed as a policeman for three years. If the bazaar reopens and the other business people come back, then I'll reopen my shop. Others have followed his lead. Ishmatullah says the Taliban came to his farm one day and burned all his crops. After enduring years of intimidation, he and his wife fled, along with 13 members of their family. We came quietly in the night. The Taliban didn't know we were leaving. He's now waiting to go to police training college in Lashkagar so he can officially be registered as a member of the ANP. Abdul Sattar has also sought refuge in Tangi with his wife and children. He too will go to train in Lashkagar. It is a dangerous job. Recent attacks cost the ANP both men and vehicles, but they're holding the line and the police officers here insist they have to do it. We put ourselves in danger because of our country, because of our families and because of our location. They're very professional, very uh, proactive. Um, a lot of the time they don't ask for the ISAF support, they just go out themselves and they patrol. You see them uh, on, a, on um, early hours in the morning patrolling regularly through uh, the, the towns, Tangi and Kanzi and Eski. Um, they don't, they, they're not told to go on any patrol programme, they just do it. The Chief of Police is quite proactive in pushing them out as far as he can and get them safely. ISAF troops can walk the streets safely now. As well as the ANP on the ground, they have the whole area under surveillance for miles around from their patrol bases on the tops of the surrounding hills. We're overlooking the ground when the lads are going out on patrols. We're overlooking all the hot spots and at night we have uh, night vision so we can see if there's any activity on the ground. In recent weeks it's been British and American Marines side by side as they prepared to hand over responsibility for the area, allowing the British to reinforce troop numbers in Sangin. Securing the slowly returning population of Tangi and all the villages around it is the priority now. They're going to need aid and reconstruction projects to pick up the pieces if they're going to provide the next generation with a viable future.